Shall I start? Good day to all. I am your Dr. J. Prasanna Kumar, Associate Professor in the Mosa University, Malaysia. Today I am going to talk about the physiological aspects of yoga. Before that, I want to give a small clarification. Neither I am an expert in yoga nor I am a yoga practitioner, but I am just a physiologist who is interested in physiological research and the yoga and impact of yoga on health of mind and the body. Acharya Patanjali, father of yoga about 200 BCE. Nearly 200 BCE years ago, great Indian sage Patanjali has explained yoga as a tradition and system that controls the body and mind in the status Yoga Sutra. Patanjali's famous definition of yoga is Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodaha, which means yoga is the removal of the fluctuations of the mind. Chitta is mind, Vrittis are thought impulses, Nirodaha is removal. Now let us say few things regarding the causes of the diseases. What is a disease? You dissect the verb dis is that gives you the answer. Means dis you is means I am not at ease. That is disease. Now let us see what are the few things that causes disease. Psychologically on one side physically on the other side. Psychologically, anger, hatredness, stress, greed, and all these things, they cause imbalance in autonomic nervous system. On the other side, overeating, over drinking, taking drugs, and all these things, it leads to release of toxins, which again causes a disease. That means psychological imbalances are on one side and physical imbalances are on the other side. These two things, they cause a disease. Now, before starting all these things, I would like to highlight a few things regarding the autonomic nervous system. Most of the diseases, for that matter, they're all, maybe all, all are, due to the imbalances in the autonomic nervous system. What is autonomic nervous system? Autonomic nervous system has got two components. One is parasympathetic component, which is known as housekeeping mechanism. Mainly it is concerned with inhibitory actions. It inhibits the overactivity. And second one is parasympathetic activity, which is always excitatory in nature, means fight, flight, or flight in a situation where there is a dangerous situation. Either you fight with this dangerous situation, or you will run away, or you will just scare out of it and sit at a place. All these things are the implications of sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic division, where it is situated. It is located on either side of the spinal cord. It extends from the base of the skull to the coccyx. There are 23 sympathetic ganglions, which are arranged segmentally in each trunk. Three cervical, 11 thoracic, four lumbar, four sacral, and one coccygeal. These things are communicated by rami communicants. Rami communicants means fibers which communicate, which attach this chain to the spinal cord. You can see in this diagram, that is how these spinal uh, or the sympathetic ganglions are all connected 
and these things they supply almost all the parts of the body starting from your eye your lungs your <clears throat> uh, heart and your gastrointestinal tract your uterus and other things parasympathetic division contrary to the sympathetic is also known as craniosacral division because there are two sets of nerves it starts one set of nerves they start from the brain and the other set of the nerves they starts from the sacral region that's why it is known as craniosacral it is concerned with keeping the body energy into a low level that's why it is called housekeeping mechanism its activity is illustrated in a person who is in the relaxed state where his blood pressure heart rate and respiratory rates are kept at low levels but one thing is very very important regarding this sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions sympathetic division is excitatory in all the organs means if you stimulate there will be the excitatory organs increased heart rate increased pulse rate increased respiratory rate and all such things but it is inhibitory in the case of gastrointestinal system it decreases the motility it decreases the secretions and all these things whereas parasympathetic division is inhibitory in all the organs if you stimulate it it inhibits the action of various physiological actions in the organs but except in the gastrointestinal tract where it is excitatory if you stimulate parasympathetic division it stimulates the secretion of the gastrointestinal tract increases the motility that's why this system is also known as rest and digest the effects of yoga these effects of yoga are actually they have conducted so many experiments in states and various journals have published lot of things regarding the yoga i am going to give few things yoga practices for a month not only led to a reduced reduced degree of optical illusions in psychological patients it also improved neural performance and reduced fatigue and stress level this is a yoga stance actually this is concerned with pranayama which i am going to describe later there are eight paths of yoga for example there is a self in the center first one is yamas there are five moral restraints second one is niyamas five observations asana postures and pranayama mindful breathing pratyahara turning the mind inwards dharana concentration dhyana meditation samadhi spirituality all these things about eight paths of yoga are important to attain a final thing let us see what are yamas yamas are restraints focus on ethical standards and sense of integrity in one one's path is yes. very important ahimsa harmlessness non violence satya truthfulness asteya non stealing brahmacharya moderation aparagraha generosity these are five yamas niyamas niyamas are observances 
or ways of using yoga as an authentic expression. For example, shaucha, cleanliness, purity, santosha, happiness, content, contentment, tapas, self-discipline, swadhyaya, swadhyaya means study and ishvara pranidhana is surrendering yourself to the nature. Asana. Asana or posture is used to connect the body with the mind and soul to cultivate balance, strength and flexibility and body awareness. By stretching the body, we open up the channels or nadis for the energy or the prana to flow freely throughout the entire body. Asana means Commonly, we have got a notion that it is something like keeping the body in awkward positions for some time and taking the breath and leaving it. No, that is not true. It is a way of connecting your soul and the body to the supreme consciousness of the cosmic energy. Pranayama. Pranayama or life force extension is a mindful breathing. That means you are breathing in a correct way. By controlling the breath, it becomes a valuable tool in clearing the mind. For more information on specific exercises, please check out our breathing exercise tab. Five, Pratyahara, our sense of withdrawal. It allows to release the attachment of the mind and the outside world around us and focuses solely on the inner world. Dharana. Dharana or concentration is the practice of focusing the mind on one single point. This can be a point in the body. It may be a sound or it may be a deity or it may be a mantra or it may be an object. By concentrating the mind, we allow it to become still and clear and are no longer affected by mental distractions. Dhyana. Dhyana or meditation is a state of no thought, complete stillness and awareness without focus, commonly referred to as the void state. It is a space where everything fades away and there is a temporary state of oneness with all life in the nature. Samadhi, that is the eighth path. Samadhi or enlightenment is the ultimate step in the path of yoga. It is often times the end goal of a devoted yogi. It is the eternal bliss, oneness with all, complete stillness and detachment from the physical world. Oftentimes, upon reaching this Samadhi, one will leave his physical body or transcend into a higher dimension, which is not possible for ordinary people like me. Yogic asanas and their benefits. I am going to talk about few asanas only because there are hundreds of yoga asanas and I'm going to just highlight only a few things so that you will be able to appreciate the effect of yogic asanas and their benefits on physiological effects. Asanas make you strong and healthy and eradicate many diseases. Yoga stimulates the parasympathetic or calming effect. It does this through breath control in your asana practice. During specific breathing exercises or pranayama and when you meditate, all of the yoga practices have been shown to reduce blood pressure and heart rate. Bhastika pranayama. This is a special pranayama. It should not be practiced by those people who have hypertension or cardiac problems. 
in addition to that do not practice this bhaktika pranayama immediately after the food or during the night time because it excites the energy mainly it develops the lungs destroys the germs of the tuberculosis augments lung power and lung capacity by increasing oxygen other benefits it improves the digestion awakens kundalini shakti which i am going to talk to you later it helps to keep the body cool in summer improves vigor and beauty helps quench thirst when you are thirsty and it strengthens the nervous system and it improves the tone of the voice relieves the stress increases the lung capacity dhanurasana is bow stands it relieves constipation by practicing this dhanurasana there are other benefits also garbhasana fetus pose or fetal stance it helps to cure diseases like colic pain flatulence enteritis chronic fever constipation etc this garbhasana keeps the abdominal organs trim and cures gas trouble and increases the digestion power garbhasana provides sufficient exercises to abdominal organs and breast and the joints of the arms kalasana kalasana stretches the shoulders and spine and it improves the flexibility it stimulates the abdominal organs and the thyroid gland it helps to reduce the stress and fatigue and calms the mind it is useful for backache headache infertility insomnia means sleeplessness and sinusitis shirshasana it increases the flow of blood to the brain particularly the pituitary gland thus it improves the memory and concentration also and release of the hormones it rejuvenates the body and the mind and regulates the flow of energy it relieves anxiety psychic disorders and constipation shavasana the benefits of shavasana are many it returns the cardiovascular circulation to normal level the heart rate is slow down it reduces the blood pressure there is complete relaxation of para due to mainly due to parasympathetic over activity or effects pranayama is taking the breath in a regular way this benefits or uh, benefits a lot for example it is good for mental relaxation sleep disorders and anxiety and irritability it brings fresh oxygenated blood to every cell of the body breathing is one of the most important aspects of yoga now i just just would like to talk something about kundalini which is a very very difficult and vast subject which is very difficult to explain also anyway i will just highlight few things only kundalini in sanskrit literally means coil what is kundalini kundalini is a cosmic energy that is present in the human body that lays dormant at the base of the spine in the perineal region and is symbolically depicted as a serpent with a coil of three and of times there are certain chakras we can see the chakras here red orange yellow green blue and bluish and purple chakras i will explain 
what all these things later the human being has seven major chakras and these corresponds to the autonomic nervous plexuses in the body the muladhara chakra corresponds to the pelvic plexus what is a plexus a plexus means nothing but a group of nerves joined together and the swadhisthana chakra corresponds to the aortic plexus the navi chakra corresponds to the celiac plexus the anahata chakra corresponds to the cardiac plexus and vishuddhi chakra corresponds to the cervical plexus the agnya chakra agnya or agnya chakra corresponds to the optic chasma the sahasrara chakra it expresses at the limbic level now we can just see the in this table in the sanskrit it is called muladhara chakra the color is red the english this thing is base chakra second is swadhisthana chakra belly chakra it is orange in color lower abdomen it is present in the lower abdomen the third chakra is yellowish in color that is known as manipura chakra in english it is called solar plexus which is present in the solar plexus also fourth one is anahata chakra that is the heart chakra the color is green and it is present at the level of the heart fifth is vishuddha chakra that is throat chakra color is blue it is situated in the plexus near the throat sixth is ajna chakra chakra otherwise it is called brown chakra it is color is indigo in color and it is present above the eyebrows sahasrara chakra is seventh one and it is known as crown chakra in the english and it is violet in color it is present at the top of the head according to the yogis there are two nerve currents in the spinal column they are called nala and pingala otherwise it is called pingala and ida and a hollow canal in the in between is called sushushma nadi running through the spinal cord swami vivekananda there are three nadis in the body as i have explained previously ida it represents the right hemisphere if you stimulate it it is a soothing effect parasympathetic effect it is left nostril if you breathe from the nest left nostril only for long time that it is going to calm and soothe them the parasympathetic effect similarly pingala it represents the left hemisphere which is aggressive in nature that is sympathetic and this pingala it represents right nostril if you breathe from right right nostril always it excites the sympathetic activity that's why in this pranayama alternate moment of the air from right nostril and left nostril is advocated so that a balance is brought in between the parasympathetic and sympathetic and sushushma is pineal gland which is the highest thing which is present in the brain benefits of meditation what is meditation meditation is nothing but the concentration of the mind that's it what is the definition of meditation meditation is a mental discipline by which the practitioner attempts 
to get beyond the reflexive thinking and it gets into a deeper state of relaxation or awareness it is nothing other than this what is the benefits of meditation it relieves the stress it manages your anger it controls your anxiety it improves your awareness and concentration and it improves your cognitive skills what is a cognitive skill a cognitive skill is nothing but for example your calculation and your uh, mathematical skills all these things are improved different types of meditation thought processes breathing conceptual meditation physical meditation clear mind meditation awareness meditation objective meditation mantra meditation let us see what is breathing meditation it is concentration on the rhythm of your breathing how you are taking the breath inside and how you are leaving the breath outside if you follow the path of the air inside and outside that is known as breathing meditation which is also now known as vipassana dhyana so this is a buddhist way of doing the things conceptual meditation concentration on a physiological concept it allows the mind to wander and expand it expands your mind widely what is the benefit is it chavos versus order it brings a balance between chavos and an order you can see in this diagram this is called the yin and the yang energy they are just adjacent they are each of them they are sleeping in the lap of each other so when there is an imbalance here that is going to lead to lot of health problems physical meditation exercise that is also a type of meditation here it helps your reaction to opponent's actions and heightened awareness during the competitive situations if you combine with the control breathing it has got lot of benefits this is also called physical meditation clear mind meditation it is very difficult to practice but still it is more effective it helps to concentrate your mind and keeps the mind totally blank for some time so that you will not have any sort of good or bad thinkings awareness meditation here you are going to concentrate your attention on certain sounds it may be certain sound or certain light or whatever may be the things this is what is known as awareness meditation object meditation you are seeing a cycle here and in the center there is a blue thing for example if you concentrate only on that without thinking anything it is very simple and it gives a total awareness of the point and your mind becomes quiet this is called object meditations mantra meditation chanting certain words phrases hymn or prayer to clear the mind and this provides a vessel to concentrate the mind also famous practitioners are there you must be knowing who is steven stegel a very famous karate expert has acted in many of the english films similarly richard gear orlando bloom and tiger woods these are the famous people who practiced these meditations and yoga science behind the art meditation health benefits increase the longevity of the life lowers the heart rate 
and blood pressure relieves body of mental and physical stress that is regarding my lecture and i would like to say something regarding my university here in the basa university this is a pioneer university in accepting the new challenges in the field of medicine and other sciences including including other technologies also it encourages everything mainly it encourages the young doctors to take up research about scientific and non religious please please i want to stress this word non religious yogic methods and its benefits on healing and we have got lot of uh, programs in our school of medicine for example master of science in the public health one course master of science in public health odl another course master of medical science in anatomy in human anatomy and dissections and master of medical sciences and bachelor of medicine and bachelor of surgery mbbs course and also we have got diploma in paramedical science and this is the best university in malaysia to join so that you will further your knowledge and your skills thank you very much if you have got any questions i am ready to answer please this is educative and informative packed thank you prof thanks a lot thank you very much sushila hi and sushila from masa avenue international college what a good sharing thank you prof thank you very much thanks a lot thank you sir very nice message thank you thank you dear thank you Richard Austin Spill. Good information, Prof. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard.